If you've crossed age 40 and started noticing some changes in your body that you do not appreciate, I totally hear you. Don't give up. In today's video, we're going to talk about menopausal belly fat. What is it? Why is it there? And what can we do about it? Hey there, I'm Jennifer Singh. I'm a doctor turned lifestyle coach and I help women over 40 lose weight, get fit and age like a boss. So belly fat, our nemesis. It's not just your imagination. If you notice that over age 40, you started changing shape. Some Sometimes it's very gradual and it's not even like the scale is changing all that much. It's just the shape of your body is changing. And this is not your imagination and has some causes. But first, let's just talk a little bit about belly fat. So there's really two types. There's subcutaneous adipose tissue or SAT. And this is the tissue that's right under your skin, the kind of lumpy fat that is, which is normal, by the way, that hangs out right under your skin, as opposed to visceral fat. Now, this is the deeper fat that you may have heard about as being dangerous. And it is true that it appears to be a specific risk factor for other diseases like heart disease and diabetes, as well as possibly being a source of inflammatory components in our blood. So while you can't know for sure if you have visceral fat from looking at the outside, subcutaneous abdominal fat is probably a risk factor for having deeper visceral fat. So what in the world causes this? Well, yes, of course, partially it is hormones. As we age, our declining estrogen levels do change how our body deals with fat. You may have thought that previously you were a person who tended to store fat on her thighs or her butt or her arms or her chest, but now all of a sudden your waistline is changing shape in ways that it never has before. So yes, hormones are definitely one of the reasons, but another one is just genetics. We tend to inherit our fat storage patterns just like we inherit all of our other traits. Also, if we're gaining fat in our belly, the truth is we're probably gaining fat all over also. If we're gaining weight, it's probably not just belly. It could also be that we're just gaining weight everywhere. And again, why does this start happening more rapidly after age 40? So it is true that our metabolism slows down. And many times we think we're doing exactly the same thing that we used to do. We think we're getting the exact same amount of exercise, that we're eating the exact same way that we used to. But studies have shown that after age 40, women's activity levels tend to really begin to decline. So the truth is you may not be moving as much as you think you are. And the other issue is that our calorie needs do begin to decline. We just don't need as many calories to survive as we age our basal metabolic rate or our metabolism does slow down. Now here's one encouraging thing. One of the major contributors to our metabolism is our muscle mass. How much muscle do we have on our body? You may have heard that muscle burns more calories than fat at rest. So even if the scale doesn't go down, if you can change your body, body composition so that you have more muscle and less fat, you'll rev your metabolism and be able to lose fat all over your body, including your belly. And I'm going to tell you how you can do that in just a second. After about age 35, our muscle mass naturally begins to decrease on our body. This is unfortunate because it actually sort of takes your metabolism with it. I imagine just your muscles melting off your bones. And the natural loss of muscle as we age is called sarcopenia. Good news is we can do something about that. All of these factors lead us to feel like we're doing exactly what we used to do, but that our body is out of control and changing shape in ways that we can't reverse. So here are some frequently asked questions that I get about abdominal fat. Number one, can I spot reduce? Not without a procedure. So really the only way to actually spot reduce abdominal fat is to have it frozen, heated, ultrasounded, vacuumed, or surgically removed. And whether or not that's a good idea for you is something you need to discuss with your doctor of course. And while there are some topical creams that contain chemicals that have been shown to actually remove fat, you have to use a lot of it for a long time. And the fact is that it's just not that effective or come on y'all, we would all be doing it. Okay. Another question. What about core work? So yes, core work is great for a ton of reasons and it can change the actual appearance of your abdominal section and your waist by tightening and strengthening the muscles underneath. It also really just improves your posture. There's a ton of reasons to do core work, but will it actually melt off fat that's right there? No, it won't. What about specific diets that you may have heard about from your friends who say, oh my gosh, I did keto and I lost all my belly fat. Well, if you'll take a good look at her, you will notice that she probably lost a lot of other fat too, like face fat, arm fat, butt fat. So while yes, you can lose a lot of weight in a lot of different ways, as of yet, one specific diet has not been shown to way outrun all the others when it's specifically 
specifically comes to getting rid of belly fat. And what about supplements? That's another really common question that I get. Is there a specific supplement that I can take to help me burn or get rid of abdominal fat? And there's not a body of studies that shows with any degree of confidence that any specific supplement is going to be consistently something that helps you get rid of belly fat that has a safe side effect profile. However, if your BMI is over 30, discuss with your doctor if an FDA approved appetite or weight control medication might be helpful for you. Okay, so if you're totally bummed at this point, hang on. We're headed to the light. So what are we supposed to do? So the first thing we need to do is burn fat all over our body. And we do that by putting our bodies into a calorie deficit. Now, as I said in one of my previous videos about all of the 60,000 diet books that are available on Amazon, there is more than one way to skin this cat. The idea, however, is to pick an approach that has an incredible safety profile, is filling and satisfying, affordable, easily available, and has been shown to fight long-term diseases like heart disease, cancer, and diabetes. Check out my video on why I eat a whole food plant-based diet. In fact, some foods might be riskier for abdominal fat, and those have been studied a lot, and specifically highly processed grains, highly processed sugars, sweets, and packaged foods, and liquid sugar, just think any sugar-sweetened beverage, appear to be specific risk factors for liver fat specifically and possibly visceral fat. So on a whole food plant-based diet, you naturally decrease those components. Most people who start eating a lot of whole unprocessed plant foods naturally begin to cut their calories even without really realizing it. It doesn't mean that tracking your calories can't be a good option though. Many people enjoy tracking your calories. If you want to, track. If you don't want to, don't. But I do like to recommend that you track for a short time as a training tool. It really helps you recalibrate. Where are my calories coming from? Look how much of this broccoli I can eat and not get very many calories at all. Look what happens if I eat this meal out at this restaurant. I use up most of my calories for a whole day. So it can be a really good teaching tool. If you're not going to track calories, start by cutting out some things that are just known to be really calorie dense, like oils, butters, cheeses, even some really healthy foods like nuts or nut butters. They pack so many calories into such a small space. So if you're someone who really enjoys nut butter, you might consider not keeping huge containers of it in your house so that you sneak in there and eat it with a spoon all the time until it's gone. I just heard that people do that. Other healthy foods that can pack a serious sugar and calorie punch are things like granola bars and loose granola. It doesn't mean you can't ever have that stuff, but measure it out. Any processed sweets and liquid sugar, just stop. There's really no need for adults to drink sugar sweetened beverages. If you're trying to transition from sodas, consider some stevia drops or even some of the stevia sweetened sodas that they have now. Finally, the other sneaky calorie that people don't think about is alcoholic beverages. You can easily gain weight and blow your weight loss attempts with one drink a night repeated over several nights of a week. Another good way to naturally improve the quality of your diet, not necessarily focusing on calories, calories if you don't want to is focus on fiber. Track your fiber for a while. 25 grams a day is the minimum for women. And most of my clients who are eating a whole food plant-based diet easily blow that out of the water every day. Anywhere from 40 to 70 grams a day is really normal for someone eating a whole food plant-based diet. Okay, enough about food. Number two, exercise. There are literally thousands of medical conditions that exercise improves the state or outcomes on. But when it specifically comes to abdominal fat, I looked at a lot of different studies and cardio does burn more calories in the moment and even by itself is effective for getting rid of abdominal fat. But if you really want to hit that belly fat with a one-two punch, you need a combo program that involves cardio and resistance training. Now this may not make any sense to you. You might be thinking to yourself, but if I'm doing squats, how is that going to decrease my abdominal fat? It does because by building muscle, it creates a body that burns more calories at rest. And again, all of the thousands thousands of reasons that we should move anyway, decreases our risk of disease, improves our mood, fights depression and anxiety, regulates and reverses insulin insensitivity, and helps regulate your glucose levels. Exercise is a powerful cancer fighter. It helps you sleep better and it helps you regulate your stress. A basic program involving even at home resistance training two to three days a week, alternating with walking days for a total of 150 minutes of movement a week is an incredible incredible goal. And this leads me to my third and final recommendation to fight belly fat, which is get some sleep and regulate your stress. So I put those together because I have found that most of the things that we do 
you to intervene with one, help the other one. If you are getting a better night's sleep, you tend to be a little better at regulating your stress. And many of the things that I recommend for regulating stress also result in a better night's sleep. So a great place to start is just good old meditation. I have a whole video about apps that I use to keep me healthy. And there's one that I recommend on there about meditation. It's called the Balance app. I love it. It's not the only one out there, but it's great. And if you have onyx sleep problems, talk to your doctor. I have known women for whom fixing their sleep was the first and most important thing they ever did for their health. And everything else became easier and possible after that. They started exercising. They had the energy to think more about their food and to eat better. Their stress became better controlled. You may have reached this point and be disappointed. Like when is she going to talk about the new discovery, the expensive herb, the things that she's selling to get rid of my belly fat? Come on, lady. I don't have any of that because what's been shown to actually work are the things that I've just listed out. And that's clean eating, movement, and sleep and stress regulation. This is exactly what I help women do in my program. If you'd like to know more about how I help women get fit, get lean, and age like a boss, just drop in a comment below. Tell me more and I'll see you soon.